Welcome back. Uh, yeah, it's been a while since we've last played on Lee Chess, since we've been playing so much Shogi as of late. But chess is still a great game. LeeChess.org is still a great website. And we happen to be challenged uh, by our good friend Blunderfully here. So let's have some fun. All right. Hello and good luck. Oh, what to play today? Uh, lately, in Blitz, I've been playing a ton of uh, 1E4, King Pawn opening. Oh, and I've been playing a lot of Exchange Slav, but I don't want that to be my tournament repertoire. So... I am going to struggle to try to remember how to play this Slav opening. Um... Mm, I think to prevent E... well, no. I'm so confused already, right off the bat. Um, I think Bishop G5 is a line in the Slav. I'm not so sure. And I think on Pawn takes Pawn, I can play A4. I think. I hope I'm right. I can never remember this stuff, man. Jeez. This is why I'm an expert and... <laughs> Actually, I'm not even an expert on uh, the U.S. Chess uh, Federation rating system. I'm 30 points shy of expert. But if I spent more time studying openings... Um, like, if I really wanted to win a lot more than I'm currently winning, then I would put in a lot of effort. And if I put in a lot of effort, I could probably gain 30 rating points if I just, like, made that the sole purpose and function in my life. I could do that. Uh, instead, I tend to focus more on coding, which helps the community, but doesn't help me so much, and that's okay. Um... So, I'm content with not knowing this, but man, it'd be nice to know it. It's just, there's too much to know. So, what has me confused is, I don't recall if A4 is actually playable here. Uh, candidate moves that come to mind are stuff like this, and this, and maybe even this. I'm not sure about that. Um... So, I know f about, well, many years ago, I put some study into the Karo Khan, which is if the king pawn has been played, you have a kind of similar pawn structure. And with that, you'd end up playing knight b to d7. Okay. And here, what I'm unsure about is if my opponent's just being polite. Or, um, I know e6... It felt like that's a candidate move, although it prevents bishop f5. But it feels like if I were to play e3 or e4... I've played e4 in the past. I played it against... The position might not be identical. I played it against a 2000 and got absolutely smashed for playing it. But the position might be different than my over-the-board game. So, I could be confusing a lot of things here. So, I'm going to play this more cautious e3. Um, oh boy. So, I could retreat. Retreating in other lines is a thing. Yeah, no, I think this is reasonable. And... If they do lash out with g5 at bishop g3 and h4, and even... I wouldn't play h4 necessarily. Um, I think bishop... or g5 is going to come in a later phase. Perhaps if I play knight f3. Typically you do play knight f3 in this opening, but I think my opponent's play is somewhat atypical, so 
it's fine if I deviate as well. Uh, um, well, I'm extremely confused. Candidate moves. <sighs> Candidate moves. Um, so queen c2 is interesting because it allows g5 knight h5. I don't know if queen c2 has any advantage other than preventing knight e4. And knight e4 is just uncomfortable, but otherwise fine. I don't want to grab my pawn back just yet. Rook c1 feels accurate, but um, not sure. This has my curiosity. So what to do? I need to castle. I want to take the pawn. Oh. Oh. Okay. What's going on here? If I take the knight, then I take the pawn, or the reverse order takes place. Um... This has my curiosity, I have to know. What's going on in this position? Oh, my knight's pinned. Um... Hmm... I'm too curious. I am too curious. I play with fire, but, you know, sometimes it's fun to do this. After the game, I'm... I don't know that we're going to analyze between games, but if we do, I'm really curious, like what I've just done in this opening. I mean, clearly I'm being outplayed, but... Um... Okay, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Jeez. What do I do? I need to develop my bishop, and I can't take the pawn anymore, and if I open this diagonal, the bishop just... Harpoons my rook, so we have to go this way. Um, mic check, mic is on. All right, so what now? Afternoon or morning or whatever it is. Oh my goodness. How do I play this? We need to activate the pieces. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, sometimes I do stream. I was afraid of this, but fear can only govern so much of my decision making. I think this is still the best I can play here. It does... 
I have another decision, don't I? <laughs> do I do night takes? I think I do. Yeah, my knights are awkward. Um, but if I were to start doubling my pawns, this position would get pretty difficult to defend. Um... And blitz chest, the knights can be an advantage. Uh, what to do? We have to use the knight. I do not. Sometimes I play shogi. Sometimes Japanese speakers visit. So uh, the translation bot is helpful in those cases. Uh, at some point I'd like to learn. There's just too many things to learn. But I would like to. Alright. Let's try to... Oh, really? I'm not so sure about this pawn move. Like, what does this do? I'm missing something here. It looks beautiful. Um, I'm still missing whatever the point is. Uh, perhaps that's the point. Um, let's try this. Uh, I don't like this position anymore. <laughs> oh, I've made such a mess. Uh, okay, let's try this. This is sketchy. Woo, this is sketchy. Wait. Oh, I'm getting mated. Oh, that's unfortunate. Um, yeah, nicely played. Oh, okay. <laughs> ah, yeah, yeah. It's been keeping up with the latest slap theory. Wow, nice. Ah. Ooh. Yeah, I mean, so I've not yet made expert, and it's because of stuff like this that I've just not studied enough. I need to study more to, like, suck less. Uh, probably e6, e3 immediately, bishop b4 makes more sense. Yeah. Yeah, perhaps so. Yeah. Scene bishop b4, queen a5, fourth. Yeah. But, like, my opening study in chess is extremely weak. Like, I tell everybody that I'm bad at openings, they don't believe me. And then I play games like this, and they still don't believe me. Um, that's yeah, a pretty wild game. Like, so if I were to go over here, hit the Analyze button, um, yeah, so I should have just taken the pawn. Yep. Oops, if I refresh, do I get my chat back? No. How do I get back to the game? Okay. Can I refresh this list to get back to the game? This just takes me to the analysis view. I don't see a way to get back to the game. Strange. I thought there was a way to return to it. Whatever, I guess I'll have to challenge uh, him to another game. Uh, yeah, this is... Oh, somehow it flipped to his perspective too. Because I was looking at it 
F to flip the board. I was looking at his game history. Um, yeah. Oh no, this is the game page. It's just he's no longer in this game page room, but also somehow we got com a computer analysis printed here too, no? Well, we had a computer analysis and now it's disappeared. Okay. I seem to be doing very well at breaking things today. Uh, but we had a computer analysis and had annotated the entire game. We've lost the game annotations. Uh, I should probably just challenge him to another game. And it could be good fun. So we had just played a real-time 5-5 game. It's a good time control. What am I doing? I'm interacting with the image behind the game seek window. That is so weird. Accidentally selected everything. All right. Uh, yeah. So, I tried to analyze the game. <sighs> Sorry, I got confused about the Lee Chess UI. Uh, good luck. Uh, <laughs> All right. So. If you can't beat him, join him. This is the saying, right? Knight f3. Alright, I'm gonna play c6 anyway. Show me, like, if my opponent's committed to this, how should I play this as white? Um, Knight f3 does make a lot of sense. Okay. Um, can I do this here? Like, somewhere around five years ago, I did study this a little bit. So I might know some of the moves. But, um... Yeah, how does this go again? How uh, does this go? I don't remember. Um, Just don't know. Um, am I supposed to take this, perhaps? It doesn't feel like that's right, but, like, I'm extremely confused. Also, I'm trying to remember some really wacky gambit line where, like, one player sacrifices a rook for a bishop or something. I'm not remembering it, but I'm trying. Um, so, is this this wacky gambit line? We get something for our pawn. Wait, we're still up a pawn. That's strange. Um, So what have I overlooked here? Because this is a pin. And I've defended my rook here. Ah, 
So this is no longer a pin. Alright. So now I have to defend my king. Materials even. I've not lost yet, but... Um, definitely I'm getting free lessons today. Which is kind of interesting. Alright, so... My rook is kind of trapped. I want to activate it. So now we prevent them from castling, but since this is an endgame, castling is not so relevant. What is relevant is that my bishop is active, and I'm threatening to bring the knight out. But I don't know that I have any threats beyond that. On the other hand, I'm not seeing their threat, unless like it's to activate this somehow. Yeah, this is bizarre. Oh! Okay. So, check block, knight moves, then what? Still have not castled yet. They... Not sure what they do. Check knight fd2, knight d7, f3, knight f6. I mean, realistically, there's nothing other than this check here, so I need to play this. Because we're in blitz. Or we're playing blitz, so I, okay. Now I could drop back the bishop. I did think about this. And I thought I wanted to drop it back, and I still think uh, I'm cramped. Do I really want to avoid this exchange? Yes, because my development sucks. They're also cramped. So it's fine for me to do this. Um, okay, play the obvious. I'm trying to get this French pawn structure like position, but I'm not sure like if they actually play e5. Exchanging knights on d5 looks not great for me. Okay, what? That's I was gonna laugh at it, but I should actually be scared because I don't understand. Um Yeah, let's just castle. What I'm scared of is some kind of stuff happening here, and I don't really know what to do about it. Oh. Okay. Interesting. I'm even more confused. Alright, I have to take this because my position's bad. Um... Seems like the obvious candidate. Yeah, 
Yeah, so I, I'm thinking something like this might happen. Um, but I can easily hit this. Okay. I've got to take the pawn. I missed a comment. Yeah, no. All right. So what now? The knights, well, we both have knights here. Knights tend to be an advantage in blitz. But we both have knights. Um, I'm going to play this so I don't accidentally get checkmated. But also controlling the g4 score could be useful. Um... Okay. I can't sacrifice my rook, so this seems to be the only space it can go to. I can't speak so much. I don't have time. Um... Sorry for lack of commentary, this endgame is really tough.
<sighs> oh, that was... Yeah, it was a, mu a bit much. There was a five second increment. Uh... <sighs> That's a bit tongue-in-cheek that, like I say, you need to learn to play endgames. But over the board in tournament situations, my god, I loved some endgames. Not so much at an amateur level, but in like serious rated play where there's money on the line. I flub end games. Um, rather that and whenever masters are so kind to join the local chess club and play games there. Um, yeah. Um is thinking about my backward pawn on c6 and realized he had no way to stop rook d8 and then bishop e3 bishop b4 as a disaster uh played actively but struggled to evaluate anything so yeah no you're right i was able to get very active um So, yeah, here I was able to prevent the room castling. 17, bishop c4. Wherever that happened. It was a pawn. I guess. Oh, this thing. Yeah. They couldn't stop rook d8. Um, yeah, rook d8, etc. Oh, yeah. Hmm. So I usually lose on both sides of this opening, and quite a few other openings, but this one in particular. So that's why I played it here against such a esteemed opponent, um, in the hopes that they'd be able to show me, like, what are some things to watch out for. Um, it's true that, like, with Rook D8, I actually got a decent position, but... Um, even this, I couldn't play well. Yeah. Yeah. No. So I was able to gain the pawn. And then I flubbed this endgame. Like, what's with me? How do I not know how to play these endgames? After all the endgame study I've done, like, how is it that I get outplayed like this? It's because, one, I'm in time pressure from the opening. Two, I don't know what I'm doing. I mean, this pawn on f3... Clamps my knight on f6. My pawn on h5 doesn't help any. So it's not easy to convert. Um, the rook exchange is a decent idea in theory. Uh, yeah, I ended up in massive time pressure. And here just couldn't think of what to do. Uh... But apparently, yeah, he's saying lose 17, this is ship C4. Um, got him in trouble. Yeah. It's possible that knight, knight might need to return back to F3 at some point. That could be. This game leaves me so, so many questions. Um... Because I don't think I've ever seen this before. Hmm. Yeah, maybe bishop d1 on move 17. Okay, I mean, I could glance at this. Bishop d... Oh! 
Yeah, so this is the idea, so you can block on e2. Rook d8, knight f3. Uh, yeah, so if I do this sort of thing, you could bring this back. Uh, whoops, like that. And it's okay. And meanwhile, you're threatening to block here, and things will be okay. Yeah, that looks interesting. Wow. Very cool. So... I guess I'll take a look at the analysis board, which... Oh, last time I lost him, and I lost the game analysis and all that. Okay, I guess recently I've analyzed too many games, so I don't have the game analysis button. Or game analysis is simply broken at the moment. I don't know. Something's up with game analysis. It's probably just me, and it's probably just I've hit the rate limit. Um, so A4 is book. Okay, and then there's one game in the database in that position. C4. Knight F6 is the majority. Well, black wins 18% with Knight F6. But Knight F6 is the most popular move, and it transposes. So it can't be that bad. E6, that looks reasonable. Taking the pawn, sure. Okay. Oh, so B5 and Knight F6 are both playable, and this is just... This is the modern Slav. Wait, what are the options? B5 and Knight F6. A4. E6. Oh. Oh. And black wins 27% of the time. White wins 30% of the time. Okay, I could see that. That makes sense. Wow. That's pretty cool. Oh, g6 can be tricky as well? Yeah, it seems like a6 was the culprit, perhaps. Yeah. And, like, uh, what, five, ten years ago, some tournament player, um, they had an abundance of materials about the Slav opening. And they gave me a deal to purchase some of these materials from them. Some of them were like CDs with videos and stuff. And it was pretty cool. It inspired me a bit. But I don't remember a lick of it. Other than like there are lines with E5. But those are the Knight C3 lines. Um, anyway. Yeah, E6 looks reasonable. And like something one of my... Uh, IRL teammates might play. So, I mean, if Karpov plays it, if Kasparov plays it, it's probably okay. Um, yeah, A6 looks like a wasted move. I wonder what it is that inspired me to play A6 here. Has it been played before? Once, and White won the game. Um... Both players are rated 2300. Interesting. Yeah, that's puzzling. Oh wait, the other thing that's missing is local engine analysis. That should be available unless I've toggled everything off. That's why I didn't have any of the analysis buttons available. Because somehow I accidentally toggled off analysis while trying to flip the board that other time that we were looking at it. I see. Um, after b3, it's not pleasant with a6. Yeah, yeah. You're absolutely right. Wow. Um, okay. <laughs> oh, that's disappointing. On the other hand, like, I mean, okay, I thought a little bit about Rook A8, and my impression is that Rook A8 is bad. Um, it seemed impossible to defend this position. But now that I look at it, like, if I play Rook A8, 
and say he just passes, and I play this, and say he passes again, I don't know. Um, I can just play, like, knight g7, knight e8 all day. There's no breaking this fortress. That's why the engine favors rook a8. Um, yeah, that makes sense. During the game, I thought this position was terrible, but it's not. It's okay. It's painful, but um, there's really nothing you can do to break this here. This bishop can't attack that square. This king can't get anywhere near that square. And so as long as I don't like lose this fortress, it's fine. So even here I learned something. Wait, what? Okay, what is the engine saying here? e6, oh, pawn takes a6 was terrible, and bishop takes e6. I thought something was up. I thought I did something wrong. But what's this about? Okay, I still don't get it. Still don't get it. Still don't understand. Oh. Oh! Okay. Jeez. Um, and there's not time for something like this. Okay. Yeah, I guess that this bishop sacrifice is awesome. And because of that, um, this characterizes my earlier defense. Yeah, after this b3 push, I've misplayed with a6. I didn't have time for this, and I don't right now. Earlier I needed to play like either e6 or bishop b7 or something to try to hold this. If I could play bishop b7 with tempo, um, then I could take on b3, but I can't play two moves at once. So a6 is a lost tempo. Now what happens if I play e6? Um... Is b3 still playable? Black wins more often than black loses here. How so? Alright, this is the popular move. Bishop d2, bishop takes, queen takes, knight s6, e5. I've actually seen this before. Um, take here. Okay. Why is black okay here? Okay, I guess it's because he survives the opening. So... Huh, that's interesting. Knight c3, b4 strikes, which is no good for white. Um, bishop takes... Queen takes is the only move that's been played? Okay. Wow. Interesting. A6 doesn't... Yeah, because bishop b7 hasn't been played, a6 doesn't do anything. And that means it's the great time to play b3. So therefore, this e6 is okay. In fact, better than okay, because white's played e4. This is the right time to play e6. And these ideas actually have some potency. Or potential. Wow. Okay. Well, it's better learning that in an online game than losing another over-the-board game to another 2,000 rated opponent, so it's better to suffer this online and experiment with it a bit here. Um, how did game one go again? I lost all my computer analysis when I hit the Z key. Uh, do I have the analysis back now? I do. All right, so black was advantageous here. And you were saying that h6 felt like it was pushing the bishop to a better square. That's the impression I got here. Well, no, you're saying later that this pushes it to a better square, and it does. Um, but the trade-off is that now g3, etc., like, well, it doesn't get to push as freely on the king's side. Um, 
Although, wait, does control this. Um, I'm not sure how I feel about this. This engine line is kind of weird, actually. H6 seems mistimed. But I don't like my... I mean... Here, I was curious about Bishop G5. I think I've seen it before. But... Um, and it's been played 239 times in the Master Database. However, this is... E3 has been played 10,000 times. Knight of 3 has been played 9,000 times. This, like, virtually never gets played. Um... Okay, and I did follow correctly with a4 here. e4 and e3 is where it's equally split. Um, okay, so I picked e3. Okay, so we're out of book and we don't transpose back into book. Interesting. Yes, yeah, so I should have just taken the pawn. Um, I spent a minute on this move, and I didn't even take the pawn. I don't know. I'm not sure what I was so afraid of. But, yeah, from here on out... Here... Wait, I took here. Somehow I thought this would activate my rook. It really doesn't. I forgot my knight's pinned. This just accelerates his development. Yeah. Interesting games. Uh, I've been getting toasted over the board recently for time management and choking in middle games. Yeah. Well, lately the trend is that I end up over the board. I get I play in tournaments, mostly open tournaments or tournaments that have a division based on rating. And so I'll end up playing these kids who are in elementary or junior high school. Um, and they will have studied openings a lot. And so I'll get in time pressure. This is just, at least over here, that's how it works. Is that the opponents studied, memorized a ridiculous number of moves. And... Uh, uh, I'm trying to remember one time I got faced against this elementary school kid who played my pet opening, the Italian opening Mueller Gambit main line with C3 and like Knight C3 and Castle and all that stuff. Um, and uh, I outbooked him. And uh, so, like, the, he picked the one opening I knew. And the reason I knew it is because I used to play it through elementary, junior, and high school. And I would win with it, like, all the time because opponents never knew it. But now I'm studying a more diverse repertoire. So, like, in the chance that my opponent doesn't play into my pet opening, I still don't completely suck and spend all my time. Yeah. Losing over the board, it, it's just... Like, if you're playing in a tournament or in a serious match or something, and you drove to the tournament or to the match site, and you spent the day there, and you lost the game, like, it's not the greatest feeling. Having put in a lot of effort for a game, and then it just doesn't even turn out the way you wanted. Um, and sometimes losing's okay if you learn something from it, um, but... Yeah, over the board it can be a bit demoralizing to put a lot of expense into a game and then it uh, goes uh, pretty sour for reasons you didn't expect. So I did think about this briefly, but like, why does the engine like this so much? Or why is it this recommended? King d1, bishop takes, pawn takes. So keeping the rook on the open file, of course. But otherwise, there's no big difference versus castling. Interesting. Um, yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's difficult to... And this is kind of like why I've 
uh, not been playing a lot of over the board chess, because like, um, I find it more entertaining to not spend my hours memorizing that stuff. There's just too much, and there's too many kids, and they all know all the openings. And then there's the other tournament players who've had to memorize all this stuff to make up for what the kids are doing. And it's just not fun. So competitive play is something I've not done a lot of over the board lately. Um, yeah, no, you're absolutely right. That's the key idea in this opening, is that black creates play on this side of the board. And uh, white's got to do something. This is why I'd spent some effort learning the slob, but I've not spent as much effort as like a serious tournament player would. Um, yeah, I guess if I were like coaching and writing books and doing other promotional stuff, maybe I would study harder. But as it stands right now, I think uh, just this online program, the videos that we make, um, all this content is probably as good as it gets. I mean, even if I wrote a book, who would buy it? I don't know. So, it is great that, like, Lee Chess is an online platform. Anybody can live stream on it. Um, and if you do well enough and you appeal to your audience, um, they might even feature you uh, on the tournament pages, on the front page, depending on what's going on. Um, if you're, like, titled or something, um, that might draw more viewers than if you're just some bum like me. Uh, although maybe someday I'll get expert. I don't know. But uh, I did find it fun producing or helping design and develop parts of the site. I think that served the greater good as compared to me just like trying to improve my per uh, individual performance rating. Uh, where I have been improving a little bit lately is with the Lee Chess puzzles. Not only have the puzzles improved a bit, and I've not even contributed to that coding effort, but just my ability at these puzzles seems to have improved slightly. But um, I don't know why. It could just be that the puzzles are more diverse, or I've been trained a lot on them, and I just recognize, um, like, clearly with this, they're asking you to checkmate the opponent. With this, they're asking you to win a piece. Sometimes it's not so obvious, but if you can guess the puzzle's rating, um, yeah, then... So if you're rated like 2400 or 2200 or something in puzzles, most of the uh, training puzzles you're going to be playing against um, are going to have very similar ratings to your own. Consequently, you can like Yes, well, okay, this puzzle looks like it's somewhere between 2,000 and 2,400. And it looks to me like either I must win a lot of material or I have to mate here. Because otherwise all the endgames look drawish. Uh, if you can like assess how drawish the position looks, then you can guess like is the intent of the puzzle for you to deliver a checkmate or to win a piece or to trade into a better endgame if you think that it, the position doesn't look drush. But yeah. Um, yeah. I should show some more of my uh, over-the-board games at some point. But, like, if we look at my over-the-board games, they tend to just get extraordinarily complex. Most of them, I can... I end up being down like four, somewhere between two and a half and uh, ten pawns. Like, I end up getting positions that are really, really questionable a lot in over the board play. Um, and I have a teammate who's done the same, and like, I look like a saint in comparison sometimes, but. Um, yeah, I'm always trying to get really complex positions. Um, because, I don't know. I just need something exciting. Uh, but lately I have started learn learning some openings. Um, like, 
one of my teammates um, who just got their correspondence IM title. Um, they had forever ago suggested, you know, I should just pick something and stick with it. So uh, I have put considerable effort into learning this. It's been years since I've been worked on it, but I still remember it decently enough um, and get decent over the board tournament results with it. But it's not fun. I have had a few fun games with it, but like overall, it's just pretty exhausting. Um, so I tend to play a lot more combative stuff, but I also tend to get in trouble because I don't do enough studying. So anyway, um, yeah, it helps to build a repertoire. There are lots of books on the subject. Um, it helps to constantly be looking at games by players like 100, 200 points above your rating. Um, oh, okay, so yeah, Micha mentions that in this opening, instead of knight takes, they play bishop c5. Um, yeah. Yeah, I've played this once or twice. Um, I hadn't really studied it. But this is playable. I had a recent Lee Chess online blitz game where I played like these two but not knight f6 and I got rocked pretty badly because there's the fork trick. So like it went something like this. I'm getting the move order slightly wrong. I think they castled. I don't remember what I did. I don't know. I'm getting the move order wrong, but somehow they did this fork trick and played d4, and my position sucked. And then I played the bishop back to d6 instead of putting it back on f6, and it got even worse. Because um, then I couldn't move this other bishop. So, But no, you're right. Like, here you can play bishop c... Oh, I'm sorry, not here. Instead of taking on e4, it's possible to just play... Uh, this instead. Uh, it's definitely playable. And maybe I should look into that. Um, yeah, if I'm really fed up with playing um, the open, then I should consider playing like this. And so the book suggests, like, yeah, I knew C3 was popular. I think D3 is also popular as of late, but or trending or something. I don't know. The amateurs play this sort of thing a lot. And it's annoying because it's very drawish. Um, but player opponents who want to win will play something like this. And yeah, the classical continues. Again, you can castle. And I usually end up taking the pawn here and losing the game. I've done that before online quite a few times. Apparently you're supposed to retreat. And yeah, there's a lot to study, but if you put in the effort, I'm sure it's rewarding. So yeah, this is the bishop c5 is the classical defense. It's definitely one of like two major variations there. But yeah, there's a lot of openings to be played. And you just practice and study and learn from other people's mistakes so you don't have to learn from your own as much um so yeah now we know e6 threatens this bishop b4 thing we looked in the database and saw why bishop b4 is so interesting it's because it undermines this pawn and forces the queen eventually onto d2 so knight takes e4 lands with tempo so black doesn't get mated or doesn't De get deprived of their castling rights. So, yeah, it's all very challenging, but um, yeah, if you put in the time to study it, um, it'll be rewarding eventually. Uh, likewise, I don't know if you can actually study this sort of tactic, but you should be aware of this general idea because uh, you can have a lot more fun games that way, too. Um... Queen c2 is an anti-anti-London. You've prepared against an online opponent. 
And they end up going pawn takes d4 and getting mated in one. <laughs> uh, I'm sorry. d4, knight 6 bishop c4, c5. e3, knight d5, bishop g3, queen b6, c4. Yeah, I've played queen b6 before. c4, queen takes pawn, cd, queen a1, queen c2. Um, so they ended up taking with the pawn. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. It's amazing being able to find tricks and traps. And there's some folks like, um, well, Jonathan Schrantz does a lot of that on Lee Chess. Uh, Eric Rosen promotes the fact that Schrantz does it. Um, yeah. It's kind of interesting to see players do such contentious opening stuff. Uh, I keep trying to draw some kind of conclusion that's general or meaningful. But I think it's just I need to study more if I want to play better. And I just don't know if that interests me. This Rook D8 was clever, as you mentioned. Like, I mean, yeah, I had to find it. I had no alternative. There was no choice but for me to find it, but it's similar to stuff I've played in other openings. So yeah, then I get to take here. And yeah, I'm up a pawn, but god, this is a tough endgame. I did consider g6. Um, just couldn't figure anything out here. Um, yeah, that was very strong late played endgame. So I had to retreat the rook back. And here I just got confused. So maybe I should practice this against the engine a few times. I don't know. Or just watch more people play end games and see like how do you make use of a pawn that you're not supposed to have. Yeah. Mm. I mean, yeah, you're right that the, the rook slip at the end, like, this could have been a draw. Uh, it's not so much that that I'm upset about. It's about here that, like, I'm better, and I should have at least some idea how to play this, and I just don't. Like, this is a nice, solid shape here. And it just looks extremely difficult for me to make progress. Um, so it's really, I don't care about the rook being hanging at the end. I'm just really surprised how I got outplayed here. And yes, I was in severe time pressure, but still, I don't know. Maybe I'm a bit harsh on myself. This rook c8, well, it's forced here. I had to do this. Engine did not like my retreating move, but like, what's black supposed to do? Obviously not e5. Um, yeah, what would you play, Stockfish? You'd play the other knight, d7. Because it's blocked by this pawn and this pawn, so just play the other knight back. Okay... So then, I'm surprised White would offer this exchange. I don't think that would happen. Yeah, maybe end games are hard. Yeah. I mean, I've had end games against experts and such. Admittedly, these were also blitz where I'm up a pawn or two. Or even if it's just even material, I just lose every single time against an expert or above at this sort of thing. Every time. Level material, symmetrical pawn structure. Like, I just get wrecked every time. And I try to keep my pieces active, and I try to find ideas, but... I just, like, don't have an aptitude for it. Yeah. Okay, now that's a good point. This is blockaded heavily. I didn't think about that. 
Um, yeah, maybe I'd improve at dynamic uh, discovery variations if I improved at this static valuation. I think it's Kochev who writes about how you're supposed to have some static evaluation before you start looking for variations. Um, and I seem to skip that step a lot because I get so excited about the prospect of playing a really confusing endgame. Yeah, well, I mean, the pawn here is the only chance at an advantage. I did try to oppose rooks on the B file to try to trade them. And I considered, like, trying to check across the rank and realized my own king was far, far more exposed than his king was. So, like, if I had tried to go all out in an attack, I probably would have lost the F7 pawn. And the C pawn's hanging, too. I understand why you'd want to gambit the C pawn and just go for an attack, but it doesn't seem practical here. It's not clear where this bishop belongs. Um... Yeah. Well, if you really want to know the answer about how he won without it, I hung my rook. Does that answer your question? Or do you need me to explain, like, like losing a rook is a bad thing? Um... Yeah, no, I need the C pawn to win this endgame. It's. Uh, I guess this is why this is like a half pawn advantage. Um, because even though I'm up one pawn, it's not the greatest pawn in the world. It's a very difficult endgame. Um, yeah. I guess that's true. Anything could happen. Like, I could move, uh, in theory, like, I don't have to play knight c8. I could just move the knight here, right? And hope that they, like, give away their knight. And I could check here and just hope they don't see it. And then I could take the rook. Like, anything could happen. Um, but, yeah, no, I have to play to maximize my chances. I just, like, like if I give away this pawn, that minimizes my chances here. It's true I have to play actively, but if I give away the pawn, it really doesn't matter how actively I play anymore. This is just a dead draw at this point with the symmetrical pawn structure. Um, yeah, I don't know, it's complicated. Uh, I keep trying to draw some sort of conclusion, never really drawing one. I did play actively, I exchanged off my bishop, I pushed this pawn. Exchanging the bishop's a bad idea, but I did it in time pressure. For lack of a plan, I chose to go with a bad plan, rather than none at all. And that's okay, just doesn't help me out any. Yeah, so I got in time pressure, and that's how I justified making dubious moves. Um, and afterward I get all upset about how come I couldn't find good moves. And, like, I've heard a thousand times from every coach from every commentator, oh no, the clock, think about the time pressure, the opponent might lose on time, like, if you watch uh, US chess broadcasts, you'll hear this mantra over and over again, look at the player's clock, it's because the commentator has nothing to say, it's because you've hired some commentator to speak in an event and they don't know what they're talking about. Or it's because the player actually has like two seconds left uh, with some delay or something and it's actually worth thinking about. But um, yeah, so I acknowledge time pressure was a factor here, but yeah. So yeah, this side of the board is actually safe. I've covered the back rank. There's very little chance that this will advance and allow him to strike my f-pawn. So if we assume this right side of the or this king side is safe, then I could start considering things like this knight move and some other knight move to unwind and get out of this mess. Somehow try to activate the rook and the pawn, but don't push the pawn in a way that blocks the bishop. It's 
going to take a lot of remaneuvering to get out of this. And I just didn't have the patience for it. Yeah. Yeah. I guess so. I suppose so. Yeah, and I'm thankful that Lee Shogi uh, has Bioyomi. So we don't have to worry about Oh, we better hurry now, because we're going to run out of time later. You have time to think about every move on Lee Shogi. There's no advantage to rushing. Whereas in uh, everything other than delay chess, there's an advantage to rush. Because you'll use that time later, or your opponent won't have that time later that you're using. So... Um, with the delay clock, that's different, but nobody online uses a delay clock. Um, and even a delay clock, you still store time. Whether it's normal delay or Bronstein delay, you're still saving time for future moves. So there's still some advantage to rushing. Uh, you'll still be able to use some of the time later, it's just not as extreme. With an increment, you're encouraged to move quickly, regardless of the time situation. So, yeah, it's just agitating. And I don't think Lee Chess is ever going to change this to... So, they do support increment. They support playing without an increment. I don't think they're ever going to support um, Delay or Byoyomi. But it'd be nice if there were more diversity there. Because uh, having to think and being forced to move results in tragedy. On the other hand, being forced to play like games that go on forever is also a bit frustrating. So, uh, yeah, I don't really know how to conclude this. Every time I keep trying to draw a conclusion, I get drawn into another interesting conversation. But I guess for purposes of this video, uh, we'll just leave it there. I uh, hope people watching the video enjoyed this.